Stop watching Bias College Football playoff content and watch this instead. You came here to get smarter, so let's do it. Each of the four quarterbacks in the college football playoff, I believe, has a superpower. And so whoever inevitably wins it, I believe it will be because of this superpower. I compared them in 34 different statistical categories to see where everything nets out. Now I'm going to show you that each one of them does one thing better than the other three, and then we're going to pull up the tape and see if the film backs it up. We're going to go in order of the team's seeding. So we'll start with the number one Wolverines quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Of the four, statistically speaking, he's the most accurate and has the fewest interceptions. Now, here he is. We've all seen this play. He's up four, third and ten versus the Buckeyes. In a three-by-one outside coming in here on this switch release over route. And J.J. with dudes in his face. This was pretty sick. I haven't really seen a ball thrown kind of between guys the way that this was. But here's what JJ sees. Back foot hits the ground. Ball comes out. And he throws this. Definitely hoping that this guy doesn't continue to keep his eyes on JJ because that would go the other way. But for whatever he's seeing, the result is the result. And this thing's thrown right there. So again, from a statistical standpoint, and interceptions most accurate. Next up, this year's Heisman runner up, Michael Penix Jr. from Washington. This guy's just gonna deflate you with big throw after big throw. He leads the four quarterbacks in yards, touchdowns, and big time throws according to PFF. And here's the proof on tape, down four, two minutes and 11 seconds left. The lefty play action drops back, gets his feet set, and just drives this ball now he's got playmakers outside but usually the teams who are in the college football playoff at the end have playmakers so i don't want to hear it this is just a shot play down the field in between two defenders so here he is from behind flips his hips he's got a really a sail concept inside guys going here outside guys going over the top so he's got to get his eyes on this safety if the safety settles his feet we can go up top with it that's what the safety does he starts moving with the sail route and here's Penix just pushing that post fade down the field giving his guy an opportunity to make a much needed play in that situation. Again, that was all the marbles right there. Oh, and by the way, after that play, here's the very next play. Gets his one-on-one -on -one look backside and just rips a back shoulder to Dunze right there. So again, he's gonna deflate you big throw after big throw. The stats back it up, so is the film. Up third, the guy who led Texas to their first ever college football playoff appearance, Quinn Ewers. Now, Quinn is gonna carve you up methodically and precisely in the Mid-range throws, 10 to 19 yards. Statistically speaking, he's the best. He also has the most yards and touchdowns off of play action of the four quarterbacks. Two examples of that for Mr. Ewers. Here's that 10 to 19 yard area, heavy play action, dude in his face. Guy comes wide open, gives him a shot, makes a play down the field. Again, being able to step in, knowing you're about to take this hit and throwing this guy open. The result is he's wide open at the end, but really the concept just brings both defenders towards that check flat and he's able to let this thing go another example of both play action for yards and touchdowns but also that 10 to 19 yard area here they are they're about seven yards out just puts that thing in the belly rides it flips his hips and able to hit this little angle route this little slant route here just wide out outside again able to pull it and get rid of it really quickly scheme is helpful on that but quinn is the one with the ball in his hand making these plays and see how he shakes out in the playoffs building on what they have been so good at all season. Now, last but not least, a guy who I mentioned ought to be up for the Heisman, Alabama's Jalen Milrow. He's gonna keep the defense second guessing themselves all game long. Statistically speaking, he has the best deep ball and is the best runner of the four. A couple weeks ago, I broke down a super impressive run, not just from an athletic perspective, but just an overall impressive run in the LSU game. So for this one, we're gonna look at the deep ball versus Georgia. Instead of just looking at the actual throw, let's look at the situation. This is fourth and four. This is early in the game, but it doesn't matter. This is fourth and four SEC championship. And he's going to end up getting six-man pressure. One of them is going to spy him. Okay, so this defensive end is going to engage and then drop back. And he's going to spy, again, because of the threat of Jalen's legs. And then the other guys are coming. So it ends up being a five-man rush with a spy. That means everybody else is in man-to-man -man coverage. Keep an eye right here. This guy's going to end up running a high-angle corner route and he's going to jump inside. So he's going to have an outside leverage defender riding with him. Now he ends up beating him and stacking him right here. Jalen also knows he's going to end up having free runners. He's got dudes in his face, so he's not able to really set his feet. He's got to move and throw this thing up. So when you have a receiver running a high angle corner who's stacked, you either need to drop it perfectly on the angle they're at, or you need to widen them to the sideline. Because again, that DB is just running. The quarterback's back there. He can't look at it. And Jalen 
able to get enough on this ball to put it outside and allow his guy to go ahead and convert on fourth and four. He's a dynamic runner, and so it's a threat. But at the same time, if you're going to play a lot of man coverage, you better be real confident on your ability to cover those guys outside. And Alabama's got some guys outside like they do every year. Now, as a whole, stepping back, looking at it, I don't remember a playoff year where you had four quarterbacks that were all so uniquely different in how they win games for their team. I think you could build a case for any of the four here, and there's other elements at play. But I am as fired up as I've ever been to watch this four-team tournament thank god it's last year of existence but to watch this four quarterbacks duke it out and i could make a case why any of these guys can end up champion now that's just me but in the comments section let me know not just who you think's going to end up with that trophy but why